Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 203, recorded Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. The Amazon Fire Phone. We want to welcome you to live coverage of whatever the heck Sam, uh, Amazon, I almost said Samsung's going to announce <laughs> today. That's Andy Anatko uh, joining uh, Mike Elgin and I uh, in about five minutes. Uh, we expect Jeff Bezos to take the stage at the Fremont Theater in Seattle, Washington. And this show's in 3D, right? This We're broadcasting live in 3D? No? <laughs> so yeah, that's the yet. speculation, mm. right? A 3D phone that uses yeah. uh, ret the, the rumor that was published yesterday by the journal was nine-camera retinal tracking. I don't know if I believe that. About uh, 250 people uh, are seeing this live. There is no live stream. Uh, ours says about 100 media. The rest, a mix of Amazon staffers, third-party developers. And you remember Amazon on the front page at Amazon.com said, come to our event. Right. So let me see. There's 100 media, Amazon staffers, third-party developers. I'm guessing maybe no more than 50 customers. There are some people with customer badges won the lottery to get into that. So why did they put that on the front page? It was kind of a wacky publicity stunt of some kind. It, you know, it probably went out to millions of people, none of whom were really invited. Right. Uh, so that was kind of disappointed. odd. Yeah, that was kind of odd. Oh. Seems it seems like a cheap way to get the word out without having to announce anything. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd have to put. Out, given that the rumor has it that this is not going to be shipping for until the end of the summer anyway, it's a it's it's a good way to do that without having to field questions about well when can I order this what's it going to be uh, and by the and just by the way get, making sure the people are going to be standing by on Wednesday to hear about something fabulous. Wouldn't be the first 3D phone. There was uh, the Evo 3D that had two cameras and took 3D pictures. Mm -hmm. Right, it didn't have a 3D display, did it? No, no. Um, and there, there was, uh, there, there have been a few others. All have been major flops. And I like to remind you, Leo, was, that, it, was there an Atrix 3D? Oh, I don't recall. Yeah. I don't recall that. It doesn't sound familiar. Double but World I, Congress 2009 was all over the place. Yeah. 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 But I'd like to remind you that something like a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I predicted on Twit uh, when I was a guest on Twit that Amazon would come out with a phone. My prediction was that the most likely scenario was that it would be offered for free, essentially subsidized right. by Amazon. And the whole purpose of that phone would be showrooming. Uh, the idea being that you go into a store, you see something you like in that store, you whip out your phone and you buy it on Amazon, then you leave the store with nothing. And so I think that there's going to be, there's got to be some kind of showrooming uh, intent for this phone. Otherwise, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Remember, though, we've been saying Amazon would be giving away tablets for free and all yeah, sorts of stuff for yeah. free. Everything was going to be free. membership, and they have yet to do that. The Indeed. Fire is priced at 99 but bucks. Phones, yeah. than fire but, phone, but phones are different in that, remember, that it's always heavily subsidized by carriers. So this could be the one product that they, they could actually make a profit on per unit because they can still essentially make them for five or $600 uh, and sell them for about of, uh, get, get enough revenue for, over the course of a two-year contract that could still be a revenue-positive thing for them. The uh, leak that came out yesterday was that AT&T has an exclusive on the phone. This is all leaked. We'll find out in a minute or two yeah. what's actually happening. And, and it's, it, it's, it's part of the narrowing restriction of this phone. You, you think about phones like big Samsung phones or big I, iPhones. Those are international phones on many carriers around the world, on multiple carriers within the United States, every major phone. Here's Amazon, a major company coming out in one country, or at least in North America, most likely, on one carrier, most likely, according to the rumors, and it's a forked version of Android. It's kind of a, a random, you know, the, the number of people running this phone is going to be very, very small. And I can, I, I, I'm very confident that they will never release the actual number of users or buyers. Never have. This have phone. They? They ne they've never done it with the tablets with Kindle, yeah. uh, or anything else. And they like to keep that stuff very quiet. John Ledger of uh, T-Mobile <laughs> tweeted, uh, that uh, AT and T. <laughs> what was it? He. What was the tweet? Something about AT and T. Yeah. Be sorry. <laughs> I think. I, I think it was. Was it him who was talking? Reminding us that well, Facebook came out with their own branded phone too. That's right. And, uh, you don't see many of those on the subway. That's exactly right. He compared it to the Facebook phone and said, yeah, "AT and T is going to regret this one." That sounds like sour grapes to me, but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but I'm I'm with Mike. It's I'm struggling for reasons why Amazon would want to bother with a phone. 
unless they could figure out a way to translate that into monster sales of actual actual objects on Amazon. And the only way to do that is, as Mike said, make it into a way to do your shopping in meat space, but then make your purchase on Amazon. And if they do that, then there are retailers who could really, really buck against that. Uh, so, and they, they could never get iPhone-like numbers with this phone and make it profitable enough that they could fight that kind of a battle. So I'm not saying that I doubt anything. I'm saying that I'm baffled as to what their strategy is going to be with this. There are yeah. multiple bad theories uh, for for why they're doing this. One of them is that they're coming out with a heavily subsidized perk for Amazon Prime members. I don't think it's likely that they're going to give it away free to Prime members. Uh, there may be a discount for Prime members, but this is essentially an, an Amazon optimized phone, obviously, optimized for Amazon downloadable content, the Amazon App Store, and so on. Another theory is that, and, and this, is, uh, this is my own theory, that they may kind of target this to a certain extent toward children. And of course, for people who were accepted to attend the event, they got in return a children's book. Yeah, that is a weird, very strange thing. thing yeah. But but Amazon has a uh, sort of Ronald McDonald approach to marketing. They really go after children. It, they don't have a lot of mind share for these things, but they have a lot of downloadable content for children, all you can eat offerings, uh, where you pay a certain amount, and then the parents can control what the children see, and you can just hand your kid a tablet, and they can get all this content on their own, and it doesn't cost you any extra beyond the subscription level. And here I have his children's book. So this could be a phone. That we all know that kids steal their parents' phones, that steal them, they ask for them, whatever. <laughs> they download a bunch of stuff. They rack up big charges. Uh, and uh, but, but children like to use phones. They like to get content on phones. So that's another bad theory as to why they're doing that. I think... You might, might not be far off, though. Yeah. The Amazon Fire TV did have a kids' mode, didn't it? Exactly. Uh, yeah. So Amazon's no stranger to that idea. By the way, if you're just tuning in, we are waiting for the event to begin is that me <laughs> that's destiny calling that's skype calling and yeah. i apologize uh, we're waiting for it there will be no live stream of the event um that's uh not going to happen a video with ads after it uh the, so the so they have started now all right oh no afterwards i see what I'm you're saying, saying no I'm, yeah nothing I'm, has I'm happened sorry, yet after, on yeah. the right. On the yep. uh, on stage, but Mike, you, you didn't mention one of the one of the hardest ones to believe is that uh, is that uh, if you use this phone on AT and T, then anything you stream via Amazon services won't count against your data plan. Which remember, remember how quick how, how quickly uh, Apple uh, AT and T decided to withdraw unlimited data on iPhones yeah. after they found out how much people will actually use unlimited data. So yeah, they're gonna have to come up with something interesting though. The rumor uh, mill has pretty much converged on the idea that it will be a 3D phone using some sort of active 3D display involving six yeah, cameras, I, 720p yeah, resolution, 4.7-inch uh, screen, AT&T I, I was reading this morning that someone was speculating uh, that uh, part of the interface is going to be based on motion so that you don't have to keep tapping it to go back forward to op activate the camera. It's going to respond to tilts and, uh, and pivots. Uh, which is which would be interesting, but you'd have to really see that in operation to figure out if that would be a, an actual step forward in user interface, or if it would just be okay. Look, we need to find we'll have, find a way to make this different from Samsung and a, an iPhone, and this is what we came up with. And of course, Amazon came out with a video showing people's reaction to the device without showing the device. <laughs> although there was one frame, if you caught it just right, you could see the top of what looked like. A smartphone it looked like a you know looked like a Nexus Five or something like that, <laughs> and everybody was very impressed in the video. But you know, gimmicks are impressive uh, at least for the first five seconds. 3D uh, could very well just be a lame gimmick that's like, oh wow, this is cool, and then you never want to use it again. Uh, so we'll see what they have up their sleeve. It's it's unlikely to just be a straightforward. Here's a 3D display that's visible with 3D content. They have to have something more interesting than just the option to look at things in 3D. Isn't it ironic that the television industry leapt on 3D two or three years ago thinking mm -hmm. it might save their business, which was really struggling in yeah. high-def screens, hoping to find a new technology that would get consumers to the market, and they have since dropped it. There were no 3D screens uh, for, announced. For two reasons. One is people don't like wearing goof, goofy glasses, and, of course, the majority well, this would of them be glasses required less, it. Right? This would be glasses list. The other yeah. reason is that the content, you know, Hollywood didn't jump on board with the 3D bandwagon, mm -hmm. really. And so it's just, it, it landed with a thud. People bought 3D TVs without ever intending to use the 3D feature. And, uh, and, and so in this case, 
Amazon is going to have to get around that. They've already got around that by not requiring glasses, and they could get around it by giving you the content or by making it a user interface uh, play rather than a content play. Yeah, it's pretty hard to think of what it could be, though, that would make it so uh, exciting. Yeah. Um, it seems like a gimmick, but we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, the question will also be, there's there's a couple of ways to do glass. Well, there's one way to do glasses 3D to date, and it's called lenticular. And you've seen it even if going back to the 60s where you'd see pictures uh, on the cover of the National Geographic Mad Magazine or a postcard of Jesus. It would <laughs> change as you change the angle. That's called lenticular. Because mm -hmm. the trick with 3D is you have two eyes. To simulate a 3D perspective, you have to send different pictures to each eye. And that's why glasses help a lot. You can use polarizing filters. You can use different colored lenses. You can in some way change what one eye is seeing, and that's how all the motion picture uh, 3D TVs uh, and motion pictures do it. Um, lenticular would not be a very good solution for a phone. You you only get 3D in a particular situ position. You move your head, the 3D goes away. Um, mm. But there is, and this is what the rumor has been, there is theoretically possible, and somebody was showing it at CES in January, the idea that, Cameras could observe your retinas and aim. <laughs> yeah. Seems very unlikely. Aim into your retinas and uh, give each eye a different picture. You've got to have different pictures in each eye to do 3D. How is a phone going to do that? We'll find out. I've seen impressive lenticular technologies at you know CBIT and big shows where there are lots of technology on display that are not necessarily products because they're too expensive to manufacture. But uh, I don't think the technology is there to have that quality, the quality that I saw in these uh, demonstrations, in a phone. I could be wrong. They could have some really interesting technology. But to the best of my knowledge, the technology to make it really satisfying and really convenient where you don't have to have it in just the right position – uh, such technology, I don't believe, exists yet. Dolby has a glassesless 3D, they claim. Uh, and, mm. you know, we should get... In fact, let's get Scott Wilkinson on uh, on hold at some point if they do announce a 3D phone because he can describe it. We're, um, hearing, we're hearing that the music at the event is getting louder. <laughs> I think there must be technical difficulties. There, nothing has happened. Uh, Amazon was right on time with its previous uh, announcements and very efficient, too. We're hoping they'll be efficient this time because, as you know, at 11 o'clock in about 20 minutes, we normally begin Windows Weekly. I've already told Paul and Mary Jo we'll be half an hour late. We might be even later than that if uh, they don't come up with something uh, soon. So let's get going, Amazon. we got a schedule to keep here. Yeah. Especially you, you don't want 100 people in a 100 journalists in a room with Internet connections. They're live blogging with nothing to say except for they're late. Now the lights are going down. OK. And uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just a power failure. Uh, again, no live stream. We're going to be giving you uh, pictures and an account, a written account of this game via the various live blogs. I'm watching Ars oh, Technica. Video, and video is coming down. Up, and there's a picture. Lights down and video is coming on. person says. looking at a 3D phone, and that's how you're going to look. So now we're seeing the, the, the video. That, at the event, they're seeing the video of people looking at the device. <laughs> this, again, at, not the, really hard not sell sure. here. <laughs> not sure what's going on Look at the post-it that says you'll get 100 bucks if we like your reactions. That's all they have on the screen. <laughs> it's probably what they're just handing them the $100 and then getting the reaction for that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Look at, look at the credits, the, 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 the money credits going into their Amazon accounts. <laughs> Good. We like that. Good. Steve Kovac tweets, they're playing the Spice Girls at the Amazon event. John Ledger responds, Amazon phone doomed. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's, of course, the CEO of T-Mobile and will be the CEO of the, uh, of the merged T-Mobile and Sprint. And he's quite a character. He's a great guy. And uh, whether coincidence or not, uh, T-Mobile is planning a Seattle event today on Carrier 5 featuring Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. And he's hoping to upstage this uh, Amazon event since apparently T-Mobile will not have access to this new phone. The playing of the Spice Girls, no doubt, is a reference to the fact that the new streaming music service doesn't really have any new music, only has older music. What, you know, in a world where other streaming music solutions have 20 million songs, having 1 million songs on Amazon Music yep. Prime seems... Scant. And nothing Supposedly than just months. videos of custom customers explaining why they want to come to the availing unveiling today. Oh, these are the ones that people submitted. Here comes Jeff Bezos. He's yeah. uh, taking the stage now. Yeah, this yeah. these are the videos people were asked and invited to send. Mm -hmm. 
saying, I'd like to be there. I, I, I'm hoping they're showing the videos of people who actually showed up. They're going to show the video of Amazon saying, yeah, no, someone... you can't come. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> not the, these are not the rejects, I hope. Thanks for the free content. 60,000 people applied for an invitation to come, and they have 300. Now, that's interesting because we were just told that this, the, the venue seats 250. Hmm. Jeez, Maybe that's weird, though. Maybe laugh. there's an off-site video as well. Video, uh, front right? page on one of the most important sites ever uh, on, on the internet, and they got sixty thousand people who wanted to come only. But why would they Doesn't brag that, that, they, so? that they that they teased and then rejected fifty nine thousand? What is what percentage of sixty thousand is three hundred? Point oh two percent. Videos? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I wouldn't make a big deal out of this. I would just say, hey, we welcome the 300 people who are here who asked to be. Yeah. yeah. And then that is the, half of 1% of I think. The tens of thousands yeah. of people who asked to be in. Tens of millions of prime members. We've heard that number before and that's mm -hmm. led analysts to say, well, at least there's 20 million prime <laughs> members. Amazon <laughs> never said how many members uh, right. there are of Amazon Prime, but 20 million is a goodly number. Yeah. This is the section of the announcement that Every announcement has where they brag about all their huge numbers, how many customers, how many this, how many that. And so there's mm -hmm. probably going to be a few minutes of bragging. When they showed the videos, uh, I'm told that somebody in the audience shouted, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but notice, notice the graph is talking about prime membership, not users of Kindle devices. Right. Uh -huh. Now they're talking about the Kindle and Kindle Prime, no due dates, no waiting. Uh, this is the uh, lending library, half a million books. Yeah, they really they really have been promoting Amazon Prime as a product in and of itself, and that the hardware is just a wrapper for Amazon Prime. Yeah, patience, persistence, and obsession, obsessive attention to detail. This is one of the key precepts. I think there's a dozen key precepts that uh, Amazon <laughs> holds, and yeah. uh, that's one of them, according to uh, Brad Stone, who wrote the excellent book about Amazon that Amazon and particularly Jeff Bezos' wife did not like very well. Um, called uh, the Everything Store. Yeah. Bezos' wife okay, wrote a right. review on it. Famously. Yeah, she posted an Amazon, a very negative Amazon review, which probably helped Brad sell a few extra copies. Yeah. <laughs> Prime now has forty thousand videos. Again, a, a, a tiny number uh, compared to what they sell. They're really pushing Prime now. That's interesting because it, it means is. this will be a phone for Prime. Members, it suggests that strongly, doesn't it? Yeah. And he's also noting that the growth of Prime accelerated over the last couple of years following the launch of the Fire uh, and Prime Video in the lending library. Interesting. So they're, 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 they're hammering home that's not just, a, not just a passive thing. Every time they create something new, they are saying that they get, they get more people getting for Amazon Prime. It's not just about two-day shipping by any stretch. <laughs> this interesting graphic of a bucket being filled by an eyedropper, he says, if the bucket doesn't have a leak in it, you can fill it a drop at a time. And this, again, another uh, Amazon precept, we seek to be renewal worthy. What about evaporation? <laughs> okay, they're, 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 saying that they, they're saying they gain customers, but they don't lose them. That's right. Nobody ever leaves Prime. It's, it's like Hotel California. Because we make we hide the feature that enables you to cancel your account. <laughs> I never like the eyedropper from a Clockwork Orange, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dear. <laughs> I have to say, I've never considered canceling Prime. Once you, when, it is true. Once right. you get used to free second-day delivery... That's right. The rest is se is secondary. It's, I don't stay in Prime because of the video or the lend. I've never used the lending library. And they reset your expectations. You order from some catalog somewhere, and it comes three weeks later, and the box is destroyed. Or even from Amazon, a non-Prime product. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, you know, I ordered good. batteries the other day. They came in an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like posted, like a yeah. regular U.S. man. And it really does emphasize how great the Prime service is. So Yeah, it really is. Yeah. He's showing uh, tweets from people who use Amazon Prime. If you build a great service for one customer, you can get millions by fair. social media. That's the only, the only someone saying the only decent life choice I've ever made is Amazon Prime. That looks like a line from Louie or yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm. You're not supposed prison, to. It's, miss, it's Miss Bumptious is tweeted that one. Uh, Dolix519 says, I'm in a monogamous relationship with Amazon Prime. Esther Havens, Amazon Prime, what would I do without you? Seriously. And you don't want that to be your last tweet you leave on Earth. You never know when a bus is going to hop a curb. Yeah. That's, that's a dangerous thing. <laughs> bragging that they've been in the device business for 10 years. They launched the Kindle 7 
years ago and we worked on it for three years before that. You're not in the business if you're just working on it, are you? You're not in the business till you're selling it. Right? He says a lot of skepticism when the Kindle came out, and that's true yeah. because the first Kindle was pretty awful. Yep. Uh, everybody acknowledges the industrial design was terrible, but it did solve a problem and it worked. And right. uh, the e ink screen, I think, has proven itself to be uh, yeah. very durable. Not only that, but it proved itself by the service that was attached to that's it. The right. hardware was no great shakes, but boy, was it above the Sony Reader store by a factor of 10. Well, and here's the, here's the interesting uh, point. Tens of millions of Kindle owners, Kindle owners, um, that seems to be a low, again, it could be 20 million to 90 yeah. million, I guess. Right. But that's <laughs> considerably lower than, uh, say, smartphone sure. uh, uh, ownership. Yeah. Here's quoting ZDNet saying, I used to think the iPad was the king of the tablets, but not anymore. It's time to whip the crown away from Apple and give it to its rightful holder, Amazon Kindle Fire HDX. Boy, that's not how, what I would say. That's not true. Apple that's, had sold That's a little... Yeah, Apple had sold over 100 million iPads uh, two years ago. They, they've sold, they say, 200 million iPads and 600 million right. iPhones. That's so right. tens of millions of Kindles so is not... Amazon really isn't the king of tablets here. Again, there is no yeah. streaming, uh, live stream of this uh, for reasons we don't fully understand, but we are doing our best to cover it through the live bloggers, the people who are in the room. Uh, and uh, this is Amazon's event that it presumably is going to announce a new phone jeff bezos is on stage talking a lot about amazon prime benefits now about the success of kindle and quoting in gadget on the success of the fire tv we feel obligated to apologize for our skepticism says in gadget <laughs> lindsay turrentine is tweeting that she believes uh the public was invited to the event so that they'd have genuine cheering because journalists just sit there like a piece of wood and don't cheer and they wanted cheering in the audience. That's Journalistic ethic, ethics kind of encourages one to sit on one's hands at events like this. Yeah. Well, because you're, you're typing, you're writing. Personally, I like to fold my arms as well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't want to be a cheering section for a new product. You're, you're there to hear about the product. Reputation is a trailing indicator of excellence as it should be. In other words, excellence first, and then your reputation will benefit. I th and this is another quote. I think the most important thing we've done over the last 20 years is earn trust with our customers. We've worked hard to do that. Yeah. Audience applause on that line. That's, that's, that's their consistent message. That's their version of Apple's changing the world. Right. Customer first has always yeah. been the focus. And, they, and I think they are a poster boy for yeah. customer first, and it's worked for them. So now he's putting up slides uh, that explain how one can earn trust. You don't earn trust by asking for it. You must do hard things well and repeat. It's like shampooing your hair. <laughs> <laughs> telling you, they're getting, a, they're getting a lot of attention because two of the live blogs I've been following are now hung up. That's good. You know, I The think, Verge is the only one that I seem to be able to get regular access to. GigaOM is, is uh, working pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you know, that they're... Pro customer is Amazon's line, and some would disagree with that. If they uh, subsidize books in certain markets to the point where everyone else in the market is gone, and then they raise the prices, that's not necessarily pro customer. No, in fact, that's that dumping, and it's criminal. Uh, yeah, they have they, algorithms that essentially drove diapers.com to near right, bankruptcy, right. and then they acquired the company, right. and now they own it. And is that good for customers? You could argue it either way. Bezos is now saying Amazon is number one in the American Customer Satisfaction Index, as well as the 4C U.S. Retail Experience Index. The YouGov, who I've never heard of, Brand Index, <laughs> ranks them number one above Ford, Subway, the History Channel, Lowe's, YouTube, Walgreens, V8, Cheerios, and Kindle comes in number 10, as is on both. That's in 2013. That is a... I don't know who YouGov is, and that's a very strange... Yeah, and they're expecting index. to overtake Cheerios. I don't see anytime. Apple anywhere on that brand index, oddly <laughs> enough. They're not a big brand like yeah, Cheerios. No. Or Cheerios, frankly. Cheerios <laughs> really is bigger than Apple, don't you feel? That is, that is a bizarre index. Now, the Harris I've, Poll I've had, Reputation had Quotient Study. You've had a V8. It's good, isn't it? That's... I, I'm, I think I'd rather have an iPad than a V8. It's tasty, though. You can't deny that. It's like a, it's like a bland gazpacho. I'm, I'm not sure that I would <laughs> put that above the iPad. And All right. Now, 
I don't show this is a very strange chart that shows that Amazon has been climbing up the Harris poll reputation quotient on the right. You can see it's number it's been number one for two years now, yeah. beating Apple but and Coca-Cola. And Disney. These these are like those there there are like thirteen different miscongeniality categories in the beauty pageant. That's what all these polls are like. If you right. want to find yourself at the top of almost any list, you can find it. Here's an interesting quote. One of the hard things customers have come to expect from Amazon. Jeff Bezos says, is that we invent. Ah, now he's explaining why he sent out the children's book. Let's uh -huh. let's let's hear what's going on with that. Because that was a little bizarre. It's it the hero of the story is Mr. Pine, and he wants to do things differently in the community. Uh, his mom, who uh, apparently is in the audience, has read this book to him hundreds of times. She uh, even calls him now and reads it over the phone. According to Brad, Jeff, Jeff was a brilliant a student, uh, so much so that he was in a, a special program in, uh, I think it was in Texas, I can't remember if it was Dallas or Houston, for uh, very gifted kids in sixth grade. Um, his his biological father, however, was a circus acrobat. So mm. it's an interesting mix. So I'm not kidding. It sounds like I'm joking. He was a famous, uh, but not so famous, but a, a successful street performer. Uh, I think unicyclist. And Jeff, mm. in later years, uh, Favored the unicycle as he well. Sounds like most, I'm making stuff up now. He was voted most likely to dominate overnight shipping. Yeah, when I was in high school. World class <laughs> hardware expertise, hundreds of millions of engaged customers, prime ecosystem. Okay, he's setting it up now. Yep. Is Amazon going to build a phone? But he's not answering. First, let's yet. talk more about <laughs> the, the children's let's, story. Let me show you this brand new <laughs> Amazon retail store we're build, we're building. How? How could we build? Oh, yeah, they are at least mentioning a phone. How can we build a better phone for our most engaged customers? That is for the Amazon Prime, Prime yep. customer. Or he's pulling it out of his expertise. pocket. Hundreds of millions of uh, we, Prime ecosystem in shouty caps on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> he has pulled the phone out of his pocket now. He's holding it up. Fire and phone. And it's called the Fire Phone. Just as I predicted this morning when uh, Harry... McCracken asks, what's it going to be called? There it is. Jeff Bezos triumphantly holding up the Fire Phone. It looks like a phone. It looks, it looks like the one that was leaked on Boy Genius. Yeah. There's a home button, a physical home button. Looks like at least three cameras on the front. Yeah, so uh, you got a ton of cameras in the front. Looks quite a lot like an iPhone. Yeah. Black Rural rectangle. Glass with a rubber frame. He hard, said, to, hard to judge the size, but I think five. Uh, okay, there we go. Here's some stats. I would, I would say, uh, yeah. 4.7 or 5, I would say. It's hard to I'd judge. Depends how big Jeff's hands are. It actually looks like it's 16-9 uh, aspect ratio. It looks it tall. Does. It does. Which may, it makes sense since Amazon's, you know, one of their big products, prime products, sure. is movies. Right? Right. Movie Seeing a launch screen that looks very, very much like the Fire with big, big, prominent, like, recent <laughs> apps. Gorilla Glass, on, at the Gorilla glass on both sides, like the iPhone 4 and 4S. And it's made of aluminum, anodized buttons, CNC machined, 4.7 IPS LCD HD display. Has any phone other than the iPhone had glass on both sides? That's the first iPhone. The Nexus 4. Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you, right. Chad Johnson. That's right. And this is a Gorilla Glass 3, which in my experience has not been a great experience. Yeah. I, I've never cracked a phone until I got a Gorilla Glass 3. Who phone. uses Gorilla Glass 3? Uh, the Nexus 5 IPS. is the only other device. 590 LCD, nits. Yes. Bright, very bright screen, circular polarized, dynamic image contrast. We obsessed um, over outdoor viewing, he says. Circular polarizer, which would reduce the amount of reflector glare from a sunlight. We obsessed over the chamfer on the USB connectors. Oh, dear. We have heard <laughs> that before. Quad-core 2.2 gigahertz processor, obviously ARM, with an Adreno 330 GPU and uh, 2 gigs of RAM. Uh so already all they're doing is describing a pretty okay but not great Android phone. Yep. He hasn't so they said got, the screen they got resolution yet. We, the rumor was 720, which on a 4.7 yeah. screen is is will be considered by uh, some low. It's a circular polarizer, which lets you use it yes. outside in portrait. You can watch with sunglasses, yeah. 13 megapixel rear-facing camera, f2 lens, OIS, that's good. That is uh, so very good camera. Mm -hmm. I, I should point out that it's That's clear that deal. this is that modified Android that Amazon's been peddling on the Kindle Fire. Yep. Right. Yeah, OIS is big. 
That's big. I, I did like a six ways side by side comparison, a blind taste test, and everybody was liking the cameras that had optical image stabilization yeah. over the ones that didn't. Nokia That's does a big, it. Big deal. Um, a lot of phones don't. Does the iPhone have OIS? I don't think so. Nope. They do. They do something they call digital, but I'm not sure if it's actually if it's a buzzword or if it actually does anything because I can't really make it work. So that's interesting. They're pushing the camera. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because now they have a the photo sharing services. So yeah. If if you if you're doing something that's going to leverage the services you can offer, you're going to have to pro push good video, good photos. Remember the Moto X. The only bad thing about it was that damn camera. Right. So you can really, really, really toss it into the hopper if you. They're have doing that a direct camera. comparison of the 16 megapixel camera from the S5. The Fire Phone's 13 megapixel and the iPhone's 8 megapixel. They say the Samsung's blurry, the iPhone's noisy. So there you go. <laughs> and the Fire looks overexposed, frankly. Yeah. And, of course, this is a night shot. So, uh, yeah. The, iPhone, the, the 5S, that's, the, that's, the, that's an Achilles heel of the iPhones. They're not really good in low light because their solutions for low light are not as good as other phones. Right. So they definitely picked a fight that they could win. Show, show me a kid holding a beach ball, and then we can talk about image quality. That's what, that's what people are going to be taking yeah, pictures of. Yeah, it's in the sunlight that, that it matters. I agree. There's also a camera just, hardware key. Good. What does that mean? A camera hardware key. That's Brad Mullen so from ours. shutter button, I'm thinking? Ah, oh, that's what he's saying. There is a yeah. physical button. Press to open the camera, and then, once for the, and then again for the shot. Instant access, even when the screen's off. This is yeah, something that's... that is very popular on the Nokia phones. Yes. The, um, uh, when they when they took it off the uh, most recent uh, Nokia phone, free unlimited photo storage on Amazon Cloud. Yep. Okay, this they're making a bid, a big bid here, for the Amazon ecosystem. This is what we're going to see service. going forward: yeah. ecosystem wars between right. Apple, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. That's pretty clear. Yep, and that's a good thing. That's good that's for pretty, us. That's pretty big too, because Google just hired, uh, uh, recently hired uh, Adobe's like chief camera guy, photos yeah. guy, right, uh, to take over uh, Google Photos, and they're, you're already starting to see new services. Now they're talking about it's surround almost, sound and, and dual stereo, stereo speakers. speakers. Probably not Beats technology. Probably not. Adobe. Although, don't you course. think it's interesting? They're white headphones. That's yeah. a direct shot at Apple. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just showing off the apples. Oh, those are Apple headphones. I believe so. Those are actually, yeah. Dual stereo speakers, stereo audio and landscape. That's, of course, uh, the best feature of the HTC One. Actually, they're showing tangled up horrible headphones. They're showing the Apple headphones horrible and tangled I up. So maybe the they're going to say that. And then here's their tangle free there flat cable. Tangle free ah. design. With magnetic nice. earbuds that just snap together, comfortable and ergonomic. It's interesting how much That's attention nice. they're paying to the small things on this. It is. Um, and smart. It's an flat accumulation. really do work, too. Premium yeah, earbuds flat cables are, good. are included in the box. You don't have to buy them All separately. Right. I see. That picture was of uh, Apple phones and yeah. how bad they are. Okay. Exactly. And, and the old ones, but still, right. they, the new ones are they not any better ones, in terms yeah. of tangling. Video matters, says Jeff Bezos. What does he mean? It means we offer downloadable video. I think that's what it is. <laughs> We're watching live coverage of Amazon's Seattle event, announcing a brand new phone, the Fire Phone. No pricing or availability yet. <coughs> Jeff Bezos is on stage. He's doing the whole thing. That's right. No bringing up a helper on this one. If you've tuned in uh, to watch Windows Weekly, Windows Weekly will follow immediately after our live coverage. I think it's significant that uh, Bezos is doing the whole thing because he was AWOL on the, um, the, the Fire TV announcement. Yeah. But he was the guy who, who launched the Kindle. So... Seems to be the really important stuff that he does it personally. Amazon's all in on this phone. It's uh, pretty obvious. The real question yeah. is going to be what, what you know, they, they've said, implied directly that there's a benefit or this is for Prime members. So what does that mean? The phone's free uh, with yeah. two-year subscription on AT&T. What does that mean? Could be. He's saying how good the video is. Lots of uh, screenshots of TV and movies. Okay. I see see if they mean just for prime content as opposed to shooting video. Uh, maybe. They probably mean just yeah. prime content. Yep. Uh, there's True Blood on HBO with the HBO bug on it. The Americans. They could, really, they could really deliver a blow if they find a way to have all of that content they've got uh, they've got under, under control and basically make it free to every single user of this phone. That could be something that people who are just shopping for a new phone and don't particularly care about the nitty-gritty would absolutely stir themselves towards. Somebody in the chat room said, so is it okay to yell fire in this crowded theater? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So 4.7 inch. They haven't mentioned 3D at all, by the way. I just yeah. want to point out this may not be a 3D phone in any respect. One more thing. You know, X-ray for yeah. movies and TV shows. That's a feature on the Kindle Fire that is really quite good. Yeah. You're watching yeah. a show that's from Amazon, and you can get information about the actor, the director. ASAP. Oh, like live IMDb. They're talking about predictive caching. It gets smarter every time you use it, personalized based on time yep. of day. That's what they have in their Silk browser for the... Yeah. They haven't noticed but much. But they also, they also do that for the for the interface, because if you're browsing movies, they can pretty much figure out that you're not going to watch this movie. You might be headed for this movie, so we may as well use some of this bandwidth to just start caching the first few seconds of it the It will app. support Netflix, HBO Go, ESPN, YouTube, Showtime, Anytime. They're showing those apps. Um so in a way, it's a Fire TV in your pocket, isn't it? Yeah, or exactly. Or Roku in your pocket. Those are important apps. Music on the go. Amazon has a very compelling music offering. Yeah. Uh, well, I've especially now that they've essentially given you a streaming service. Right. They said that last week. That's what's before. not so compelling. because there's. <laughs> but again, the streaming service is just for Prime members. Right. You can't get it if you're not a Prime member. Right. So. Tens of millions no. of songs to purchase X-Ray for music, synchronized lyrics. That's nice. Yeah. I don't think anybody. Isn't does that a nicer that. way to buy those services, though? You you you're paying a lot of money up front, but it's it's like getting a subscription to uh, to Photoshop. Every month or two, you find out that you're getting a new service added onto that without right. having to pay an extra eight dollars or nine dollars a month. Does, he's showing music apps: Spotify, Sirius, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and uh, yeah. is that Slacker the last one or Songza? He's saying it's optimized for reading. Okay, so this it'd have a to be. It's great a, phone for reading. It's yeah. from Amazon. I'd yep. expect that. I don't know how an IPS screen is going to be any better than any other IPS. And, and, and just sidebar, with all those music and video services, all, they're, all they really have to say is that those apps are available in the Amazon App Store right. and have been for a while. So, yeah. Kindle newsstand. BlackBerry, by the way, this morning announced they'd made a deal with Amazon to bring the Amazon App Store to BlackBerry. And how many apps yeah. did they say? There were quite a 200,000? Yeah, it was, a large it was in the hundreds of thousands, yeah. and uh, it's going to be a big boon to yeah. uh, BlackBerry yeah. users. So Kindle newsstand, immersion reading, it will support Whisper Sync, but so does the uh, currently the iPhone and Android, thanks to an update of the Kindle app last yep. week. You can yeah. read and listen simultaneously. You know, I'm still waiting for her, for them to say, here's why this is better than a premium quality Android phone of any variety. Interesting. I don't think that they're talking that about yet. customer support now. If they have the Mayday button, that's been a huge success yeah. on the Fire yeah. HDX. The ability to push a button and have a live support person respond with video on the device have control of the device be able to walk you through things and they showed last week a, a variety of different mayday calls that were really kind of neat yeah um i bet you they put mayday on this thing they've got the infrastructure they would they I, i'll be, i would agree with you if this is for prime members only if this is going to be sold to the general public i have doubts that they would do that mayday is a huge differentiator particularly for new smartphone owners. And this will tell you a little bit about what they're gearing this phone towards. So, you know, maybe that 3D thing, I was really skeptical about the 3D rumor when it came out six months ago. I couldn't understand why you'd want to do that. Maybe this whole 3D thing has been uh, a red herring. Maybe. Or maybe it's, it's, it's as you say, one more thing. I don't know. It's difficult to swallow because you can't just put 3D on the phone. You have to come up with a context for it within right. the user interface. What do I get? And even right. even Apple Apple has has done 3D ish by having iOS 7 with layers on it, but they've never felt the need to go any no. any further than that. So, so we're still talking about support for your phone. I gotta think they're gonna spring May Day on it. Maybe the May Day talking head will be in mm. 3D. <laughs> Leaping out, it'd be like. Would that be cool? Obi Wan, your only that, hope. You know what? That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. It was just it's like a head. Yeah. This here's the Mayday, uh, the Mayday lady we saw from the original ad. Uh, the one who said, "Aw." I just want to point out how sunny of a day it was when they interviewed those people about how they couldn't use yeah. their phones in the bright sun. In the suit, I mean, they were bringing up sun before, so. Yep. Mayday. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday for the uh, Amazon phone. Mm -hmm. I wonder how different that's going to be on a phone that's with you on the bus as opposed to a tablet where you're probably going to uh, be inside. You're not. You, I wonder how many calls you're going to get saying, hi, the only the only coffee's place I see is a Starbucks. Is there someplace better near me? They're, no they're promising sir. Mayday 24-7, 15-second response time, 
and it will not only work on Wi-Fi, it will work on the bus. It'll support three and four G. Yeah, see, do that. Does that mean they have to they have to respond to emergency calls too? Um, they, I think so. They have, they have they have to have an infrastructure saying if someone is calling because they're in physical trouble, here's right. the here's the take this book off the shelf and go through it. Uh, they they talked about all the different ways people are using May Day. Uh, uh, all the marriage proposals May Day uh, people have received. He just said that something a little bit different is coming up next called Firefly. Well, I loved the show. That Maybe we'll the, like the fun. <laughs> that might be the 3D feature. Hmm. You're they watching this uh, product just as it's pro is showing some promise. Amazon said last week their response time uh, on May Day for HDX has been 9.75 seconds. S That's Really amazing. Here comes the showrooming. Bet you anything. They're, They're going to show how table you can order things. Products. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what do you mean by showrooming? That showrooming is where you walk into Best Buy, you see something you want to buy, and then you buy it on Amazon. Oh, this would be this on would your phone. make some people very angry. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's going to create so much hostility. So the phone recognizes things ah, on the you table. You take a picture of the table and say, how much yes. on Amazon? Yeah, yeah. It recognizes of course, if you're prime, you'll get it in two days, which is not so bad yeah. Yeah. compared to getting it now. People in the audience are saying that the recognition feature is very fast and can recognize products. He's taking a picture of a DVD of a Marilyn Monroe movie. He's taking a picture of a book. He's just, I don't know if he's actually actively taking a picture. He's merely, it looks like he's, it's hard to tell, but it, it, just pointing the phone at it. Uh, and I can imagine that if you launch a Firefly app, that it, all you'd have to do is aim it. Books, DVDs. I don't know. Food. What, that is that a food? kind bar. Oh, those are those are energy bars. In yes. some cases, he's focusing on barcodes, but mostly he's taking pictures of devices. We talked about this on this TNT video today. Game. We speculated yeah. they would both have barcode scanning and also visual image recognition. That's not that's new. We've seen that uh, Amazon's been able to do that. Google for some time. goggles, for yeah. example. But and Amazon's had that. You could take a picture of a product yeah, in their app. Yes. It didn't work very well. I have to say, the times I've used it. Um, but maybe it, they're getting better. It, I mean, it, as you get a better database of stuff. For certain products, it was great, and then there was huge numbers of products where it didn't work at all. Here's what Jeff says. Firefly uses the camera to recognize books, DVDs, phone numbers, mm. QR codes, CDs, URLs, games, barcodes. It recognizes them all. Firefly can okay. see and listen, ah. recognizing songs. This is one of... Oh, okay. Or can you give it a... Because I'd love to hear that voice search that we have in the Fire TV. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like you can pull up a history of all the items you scanned with Firefly and tap on one of them, and then there are actions. So you can tap on a book and say, buy it. Yeah. That makes sense. Now it makes sense. And this is why Amazon could probably give this phone away. That's right. This really mm -hmm. encourages you to interact with the real world. It's a, it's a device you have all the time with you, yep. and just buy it on Amazon. It's friction-free capitalism yep. for yep. Amazon specifically. It's got to kill Best yep. Buy. Remember the new CEO at Best Buy? Said, I love showrooming. Yeah, he was lying. Yeah, I think he's going he's not gonna <laughs> love it so much. But his point was, look, if you come in the store, it's our job to make you buy there. We've got to provide you with service. We've got to make you love it. Mm -hmm. We've got to give you a great experience. And if we can't sell you through all of that, then we deserve to lose the sale. And I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a little like dating somebody just for the free dinner. It's 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 there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, but that doesn't make you a high class individual. It's also a violation of um, of uh, Jewish law. They're the uh, the shopkeepers. Well, it also it's it's the, it's uh, also the reason why if I'm standing in a store checking my mail, I don't want to be hassled by a store just store staff saying, "Hey, you got to put your phone away." Yeah. Right, and which you but, will be, I think, if you have an Amazon. Yeah, phone. Firefly can <laughs> recogni recognize TV I think, shows. I think there's a well. reason why this phone looks like the iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> so he pointed it at a, a scene from Game of Thrones, and it was able to pick up Game of Thrones. It uh, it can listen to music. It can it can recognize TV shows. Once it recognizes the show, you can view details, purchase it, and so on. Yep. So you could be watching Game of Thrones and say, "Hey, can I buy this?" And then the phone would say, "No." Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. Mm. Next year. It's interesting, but it's it's still something. Oh, next year. No, uh, it's no, still no, something no. that you can, you can do on any phone with an app, though. Yeah, the great many phones will do that, and this just I'm sure another app. Yeah. But it ties to Amazon. Maybe. What's yeah, he taking a picture maybe. of now? He's taking a still Maybe life. Oh, he's taking a picture of a painting. Firefly can recognize art and pull up the Wikipedia entry this is on Corn the Flowers art. by Sergei Osipov. So it's <laughs> not just for buying things. Vittori Carpaccio. Normally they hat. really hate it when you take photos of art in, in a, a museum. museum. Yeah. yeah. Just letting you know. 
They wouldn't even let us take pictures of the Titanic at the Titanic Museum. They said it already sank. <laughs> yeah. Can't buy it. That is nice. If it if it really comes across to the user as it doesn't matter what it is, if there's an object in real space that you want to know more information about, trust us. This app, this phone will be able to get something for you. I, I think this it's is Google goggles. Yeah, and Google well, hasn't really paid much attention to goggles. No, they it's they do that with a lot of really cool technology. But in this case, they I love the fact that they've got a branded recognition thing that recognizes everything: TV shows, books, art. Right products everything yeah it's that's really Look at this. kind of they an took a, concept. He, he took a picture of a, a sign with a phone number on it was able to then dial the phone number that's so cool that's that's pretty neat have you seen did they when you describe the process for activating this because if it really is as if it's as simple as touch the touch a dedicated button and then capture as opposed to wake unlock switch to this app touch an activation button uh he says it recognizes over 100 million uh items uh, he says it's tough to do this in the real world. There's glare, there's wrinkles, there's curves. You know that's true. That's one of the reasons uh, goggles is you know spotty at best. Yeah. Yeah. But now, of course, Google can respond to this quite quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, they did buy that company that does live translation of uh, real-time video. So right. Word Lens. Word Lens. Thank you. Yeah, see, this is, that's the dif that's the difficulty. When Apple, when Samsung, when HTC introduce a new phone, they always say, "Here is something specific to this you can't do anywhere else." So they're showing some really cool software, but they're showing something that if it becomes important, anybody can just bake, make and bake into their phone. By the way, at the same time as um, <clears throat> this is going on, Adobe is having its uh, Creative Cloud online keynote, and uh, we'll let you know if there's anything significant going on uh, there as well. Mm -hmm. Great idea, Adobe, to have an event at the same time as Amazon's. <laughs> hey, they're streaming video, so if you want to watch your video without our commentary, there you go. It's, yeah. So well, far, the, time so far the chat room says the only thing they've announced is the ability to use star ratings in the Lightroom iPad app, which I like. That's good. Also, we had an update three months ago that deleted your entire library. <laughs> we know that nobody will hear about this or write about it because you're all diverted elsewhere. <laughs> Enjoy the coffee in the Danish. Goodbye. Goodbye. Semantic boosting helps improve the probability that the character recognition gets the phone number right. Uh, the glare on the 708 number, if you go back a couple of images, uh, made it look like a 703. But the computer actually knows that 703 is not a valid exchange in the area code 206. So it knows, hey, nope, that was, that's a mistake. It had to be 8. Hmm. Always makes me nervous when computers make decisions like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, well, look at that. Here's an apartment for rent sign. And you can scan it. It'll scan the text modules. It goes from 2.1 megabytes as a photo to 13 kilobytes as a uh, effectively OCR'd image. That's cool. Uh, you know, I have to say, this is looking like cool. a pretty good phone yeah, so far. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I, have to, I also have to say, I'm not crazy about the skinned Android that Amazon uh, uses on the tablets. Right. Um, I like it a lot. You do? Yeah, because it's very appropriate for that for that device, where it keeps your most recent things front and center. You have to drill down to get to the things you're going to have to drill down to anyway. It lets you really resume the th things that you're most uh, most interested in on the device. It looks it's like you're doing something the similar on the app. phone, and I'm not sure yeah. that's quite as good a metaphor on, yeah, the, it, on the phone. They're talking about yeah, how, the, sure. how they improve in performance. I'm sorry oh, to interrupt. Dedicated you. Firefly button. Ooh. So that's yeah. what you wanted. Not that's only great. not not a on screen button, a physical yeah. Firefly yeah. button. Hmm. That's different. That means that that means that your 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 thought about this device in your pocket is that every time you have the question, "What is this thing?" or "This might be interesting later on," take out your phone, press this button, it'll take care of it. That makes this a, a this 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 makes it a big big boost over any software you can get on a third party device. Bezos says a, uh, he's not promising a, a one second from pushing the button to the. He's interesting. The Firefly button is actually. Okay, no, it isn't. Sorry. Yeah, he, he's saying I was about to say, what, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, they, they scrape the image on the device. They compress the image, right. reduce it in size 165 times, and then they just send the, quote, parts that matter over the internet connection to boost performance. Text recognizers, audio recognizers, image recognizers, content databases. Hey, this is interesting. Plus custom this. actions in a Firefly SDK. Hmm. So people would be able to write Firefly apps as well. It's interesting to ask what, how, who has to pay for this data, though. How much does, how much does each query cost you? If it's, I know it's compressing way, way down, but that's still, if that gets off your, your puny, you know, two gigabytes a month, 
that could really add up, especially if it's useful. Custom actions. So iHeartRadio is using this SDK to support the audio recognizers, the databases. Uh, My Fitness Pal uses it for nutrition. Oh, okay, okay. That's amazing. They just sold me. I can take a picture <laughs> of my food. Finally, I've been yeah. waiting to be able to do that for a long time. I can finally imagine, take a photo of the Doritos. Yeah. Do you need image recognition okay. to know that Cheetos but, is probably something a, you shouldn't be eating? But I want to put it in my database. I want to, I want to keep track let, of it. Let, let, me, let me terrify everybody. How about you take a picture of somebody and then it uses uh, Facebook and then tell you, oh, I, I've seen that person tagged in 100 photos. Here's the identity of that person you've you just seen in that, in that cafe. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me how many calories they were if you ate them. <laughs> if you eat this person? Wine here's a wine here's right now. Vivino's done this blood type in the AP past. Negative. You with could sell his organs for this much money. <laughs> exactly. Vivino's done this in the past with wine labels. This is not new. Uh, in fact, it's not a very good. Uh, does not work very well. But maybe with the back with a firefly behind it, it could work better. Yeah, I've, I've I think, wanted I think this the idea is that. I think the idea is that it's one app, one service that does everything, as yeah. opposed to okay, I'll fire up my wine recognition app that I happen to have already loaded in. Also, if they're smart, they're going to use the crowd to refine and improve the quality. Right of how this algorithm works. I'll tell you, this, uh, if my fitness pal now allows me to just take pictures, see, the problem is it'll take pictures of packaged food. Mm -hmm. But the pro packaged food's never been the problem. It's yeah. always been that meal you just made. Yeah. So the, the wine app is called Vivino. Yeah, I've used and, Vivino. It's a yes. great app. And so what they're showing is that they are using the Firefly mm -hmm. SDK to, to... Right. Yeah. So that's... And the question is, will, Vivino's done this uh, label recognition uh, all along. Yeah. The question is whether it'll do a better job. The SDK, Firefly. the Firefly SDK, is available now. So get developing. Yes. Now, Best Buy could use this. I mean, there's no reason Best Buy couldn't have an app that says, sure. okay. All right. So their TV ad now has popped up for the Fire Phone. And it involves Egyptians. Hmm. <laughs> Egyptians are involved. It's interesting to think of how Amazon has evolved this product. They started yeah. by... Um, uh, creating an app store for Android, mm -hmm. and then a custom version of Android. Uh, they acquired streaming uh, video and yeah. audio companies. Uh, they've been slowly, really in many ways, building towards this product all along. But I think you've hit the nail on the head when you said that Best Buy could use this, use the SDK to showroom Best Buy information, which means that Best Buy, a brick-and-mortar retailer, for the most part, they're also online, but they would have to be a store on Amazon, and now they're bought into Amazon's worldview or, the you know, the context or platform or whatever you want to call it, and Amazon wins. I mean, it's just, it's an incredible idea <clears throat> to, to essentially force your competitors to become your partners. I don't know. Could it's it's a great idea. I wonder if Best Buy could afford to pay both uh, both store rental per, uh, uh, fees and also whatever Amazon fees are going to be. Mm -hmm. So we're going to 3D now. Jeff is is talking about perspective uh, and how uh, painters discovered perspective. Yeah. So that you could see what's in the foreground and the background. This is priest perspective, of course, flat Egyptian paintings. Uh, and then in the Renaissance, they discovered the idea of forced perspective or perspective. And so, so the Egyptians, and then the Renaissance, and then Amazon. That's the <laughs> progression. Well, what he's Look trying to do... Look upon my work, see mighty in despair. What he's trying to do is make the case for why you'd want some sort of depth on a screen. He's also trying to imply historical inevitability right. toward 3D on phones. Right. In other words, these other 2D phones are primitive. Yes. And uh, just as in the Renaissance, they discovered perspective, mm. uh, we've discovered 3D. See, that's the problem. It's like when you have an airplane designer that designs an airplane that looks like no other airplane before. You either assume that this person is such a genius, he's thought of something nobody's ever thought of before, or every other airplane designer for the past hundred years has, has thought of this idea and found a really good reason to reject it. So he says, there's always something to see if you change your perspective, but in a drawing, you'll never be able to move and see something else. For a picture to adjust dynamically, it would need to know where you are. 
It would need to know how far to the left or right of the picture you are. He's, what if there were a thousand artists standing by to redraw the picture every time you moved your head? It'd what be, if? It'd be like Verizon. <laughs> or those people Korea. standing there. Now, this is an inter it really is an interesting idea. And I think what they're saying is this is not too, not, this is not a binocular 3D. This is much more like the picture of Jesus that moved uh, when you tilted the yes. card. This is going to give you a different perspective mm -hmm. as your head moves. It's not using both eyes. You could even close one eye and you get the same effect. It's seeing where right. your eyes are and modifying, just as Apple does, when you rotate the phone and it modifies the background. They call it dynamic perspective, and he's showing it off uh, on one of the lock So this screens. is not 3D. We should make this clear. This is dynamic perspective. Yeah, There's yeah. a big difference. It's, right. And it's actually similar to, interesting. Yeah, it sounds so far similar to what Apple has done on, yes. friends, on their lock screen. Yep. Excuse me, on their screens. Where but they've done it more as an aesthetic effect. I wonder what Amazon. Yeah, I wonder if there's a way if Amazon can use this. Apple and others have done a simulation of this, where if you if you move an you iOS seven device, the background kind of changes. There's basically subtly. two planes. Yes, the front exactly. plane shifts over the back. Right. The icon plane over the background right. plane. But this this sounds more sophisticated, particularly yeah. since it knows. Yeah, it's not using the, I presume, the accelerometer in the phone, but using the cameras to see where you are. Okay, um, so it seems to be like they've got the time actually painted on the surface of the balloon in your lock screen, the hot air balloon in your lock screen. Wow. <laughs> I hope they're going to show off how this is actually useful because that's not worth whatever well, it's cost. It's eye candy. All right, a map. Here's a map. Oh. Now, this could be a useful uh, uh, application. Let's see what they do with the map. We were watching a live coverage. Jeff Bezos is displaying the brand new Amazon phone. It's called the Fire, 4.7 inches, 720p. Some very interesting features. Uh, a very looks what looks like a good camera. And show these. Now he's showing what had long been rumored the 3D effect. It's not really a 3D effect. It's a perspective effect. Yeah. I'd love it if they'll if they start getting to augmented reality with this, but. Well, like if you're able if you're able to like go into that shelf in Best Buy and it will superimpose on top of every package how much this costs on Amazon. Well, it's interesting that you should mention that because Layer, L-A-Y-A-R, which is the augmented reality app for uh, Android that's been out for some time, was just mm -hmm. acquired by another uh, Dutch company, Blipar. Actually, I'm sorry, Blip, Layer is Dutch, Blipar is uh, U.S. and, and U.K., um, so, I, you know, there's something going on in the augmented reality market, that's for sure. Yep. So maps uh, so, could very much benefit from this, I think. What maps are they using here? Is this Nokia? Boy, these don't look familiar, do they? No. And I no. see a Yelp review. I'm guessing this is these are Bing maps or here maps. You know, licensing here for the phone would be actually very smart. Mm -hmm. Nokia retained here, licensed it to Microsoft, right. but I don't know if that was exclusive. That would be a very, that's one of the most compelling features of the Nokia phones is the here suite. Yep. GigaOM thinks it's here. As it looks as, as, as though Amazon's it, it looking Nokia's here. It feels yeah. like here. Uh, if the, it if, looks like it. Uh, that would be, a, I think, a, a, that's pr arguably the best mapping solution out there. Certainly competitive right. with Google's. It's almost certainly not Apple Maps. That's <laughs> the least likely. It's not as pretty as technology. Apple Maps, I can tell you that right now. It's definitely not Google Maps either, as far as I can tell. It's uh, and that really kind of only leaves here, here or Bing. Bing uses the here uh, engine, right? But uh, but I don't. I think Bing has its own. I'm not sure actually. I'd love to see uh, here in this. I I, w I would that would be a yet another very strong selling point. So far, this phone is a hit, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, the only negative, the non-standard Android. But, you know, there's no reason why a, a company with the size and the capabilities of, a, of Amazon couldn't take the Android fork it and make something as good, if not better. That's I mean, right. it's yeah, just... Yeah, and it, it, has enough, it has enough apps available for Fire OS that I think 90% of the people would be happy with that app selection. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have 2 million anymore. You just have to have the right 100,000. But I don't know. Well, they, ha not, they have 200. So. I, have, I, haven't, I haven't had my wow moment with this yet. I don't know if you're going to see I mean, if, well if, 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 if developers really hook onto this and this does become a signature of apps that run on this phone, that will be really great. If it makes the Maps app look cooler, if it makes lock screens look cooler, 
that's okay. That's nice. Cooler is nice, but it doesn't transform the device. Yeah, you know, to us, it may not sell a oh, device. Look, okay, but Bezos just flicked the phone to the left, and an OS level navigation drawer popped out. Yeah, so here we're here, here we're doing physical boy. gestures. By the way, the Verge is reporting that it's one hundred ninety nine dollars on AT and T with a two year contract, which would make it competitive okay. with every other. But phone. would make it not exclusive to Amazon right. Prime members. Right. So Wonder if they. By the way, this this looks like a finished product. This does not look like a prototype. I would guess that this will be available today. Or You're probably soon. getting FCC certification for it now, huh? That's right. They couldn't have done that before, or we would have known more about it. So uh, that takes actually that can take some time. Where will they? Sell I'm, it? I'm really more interested in these in these gesture controls because yeah. that could that could be transformative. The, the number so, of times you have to you have to really manipulate a phone when really all you want to do is just take me back to where I was before, or please just get me to the next page. That's something that I don't think enough developers have really worked on yet. Although any phone could do. They all have the accelerometer capability of this. He's showing a carousel of women's dresses and rotating through the women's dresses by uh, tilting backward or forward. But that's something that anybody could do. Now he's got the Washington Post. Interesting. I think he owns that mm -hmm. newspaper. He also, he also had a shout out to Comixology earlier and Audible. Did he? Yeah, they bought Comixology, and he I said, know, and, this, and Comixology looks great on this screen. I know yes, geeks like you were not happy about that, but you know this might be the Comixology phone. Uh, actually, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I, th I thought it was okay. I, I didn't have a big problem with it. All right. Yeah, it was a, it was a technical issue, as I remember, that Renee <laughs> and other uh, comic geeks were unhappy about more than uh, a stewardship issue. Um, and Audible too. Yeah, of course, because of the. Uh, Whisper Sync, which is an audible feature. And with a headphone jack, as we call it, you can listen to audio <laughs> with it as well. He's doing something with the Washington Post. It's hard to tell from the still images, but yeah. it sound, it looks to me like you can scroll the browser by uh, tilting the phone. That's Samsung has that, of course, on its uh, Galaxy. There seems to be also an on-screen cue that you're scrolling, so maybe it's arrow, doing yeah. something with it. Maybe it's even doing something where once you look at that down arrow, that's a confirmer that you actually intended to do that. That was such a gimmick. And I think we've seen that now in the S4 and the S5. Sam, and, Sam, and yeah, Samsung had it. some of those things. Like, yeah. right. Tilt it, it's one of the many features you turn off after your first week with it. Yeah. You tilt the phone to scroll down. He's saying that's a great feature because you don't obscure part of the screen with your finger. It's a natural, easy, one-handed gesture. Samsung did it, and I never found it usable. It may merely be an implementation issue, maybe if they do it right. Yeah. I'm a big Instapaper user, and that has that feature, and I don't turn yeah. it on because it's kind of annoying. Yeah. Well, because you accidentally scroll off. Yeah. Right. That's why if it were, if it were, if it uses some sort of a look here to confirm that feature, that it's e a lot of features are easy to do, hard to do right, and that's how... That's how Apple scored with the tablet. They didn't do it first. They did it right. Mm -hmm. Checking Amazon's website, they uh, have an ad for the Fire uh, on the front page and the Paperwhite. But uh, uh, they do have Amazon Cloud Drive, protect your photos and videos in the cloud. That's not new, but uh, that is a part of the new phone. So, um, Actually, in a way, all of these slideshow items are things that the new phone would benefit from. The App Store from Android, digital software and games. Audible books from uh, 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 audio books from Audible. Yeah, these are all things that would work on the phone. So there's no accident that the current slideshow on the top of uh, mm. Amazon's front page is featuring things that would work on that phone. You're watching live coverage of Amazon's Amazon Fire Phone launch event. Jeff Bezos has been on stage for about 45 minutes now talking about uh, his new phone. We still haven't heard official word on availability carrier or price but uh, the rumors are AT&T 199 dollars with two-year contract uh, the phone is a 4.7 inch screen IPS LCD they didn't mention resolution but uh, the word is it's 720p pretty impressive 13 megapixel camera with an f2 aperture and optical image stabilization and an interesting uh, perspective capability um yep yeah. also physical do, keys do. for uh for not only for the camera but for this new firefly feature which lets you take pictures of things in the real world analyze them and act upon them including buy them on amazon of course and, and now bezos is talking about apps on the phone there's a carousel for apps uh presumably used with the tilting this is very iphone gesture. iphone looking uh, it looked like, it looked that way from the uh, early screenshot. Yeah, 
It is it is effectively a grid of uh, icons. I like I like they're they're maintaining that switch between there's one tab for stuff on the cloud, one step cloud, one tab for stuff on the device. It really makes it easy to keep things organized in your head. Yeah, and that's a that's a feature, of course, of the Fire uh, tablet. We're gonna have to start saying Fire TV, Fire tablet, and Fire phone. Yep. <laughs> Distinguish Amazon's the three products. Hot products. Pinned books in the carousel, magazines, albums. Uh, he says, "Let's go to email. I don't have to launch the app to see my newest emails because it's in that carousel." That's the carousel makes sense now with the with the uh, the scrolling based on the accelerometer. Yeah, you're basically saying that this app that's front and center in the carousel on your locks uh, on your on your home screen essentially has the focus, so that you right. can look at stuff that's real that's relevant to it immediately and then drill deeper to it if you right. want. You can pin active content. widgets underneath the hero icons is what the is what you're looking at underneath there. Nice. You can pin content to the app grid. It's it's really just remi it, it's reminding me that if the iPhone has one real Achilles heel left, it really is that launcher, which is just it's a cardboard box with the word rocket ship written on the side of it that, compared to what everyone else is doing. Yeah. And it you doesn't look like that it'll change with iOS 8, frankly. So Apple's got some yeah. catching up to do. Third parties can populate the carousel screen with similar widgets. So there's a calendar widget, there's an email widget, but you could have widgets for other products. Yeah. That's interesting. So these aren't merely icons. Are. These are live tiles, in effect, that are rotating through the carousel. So basically, you can have a mini one-glance version of that app just by having that front and center in the carousel. So one of the nicest so features it's, it's, of Windows Phone like. is the live tiles, but they're static. They're also in a grid, even though they can be sized. This gives it to you in a, in a way that you can scroll through them. Yeah. yeah. It's part of the whole idea of let the phone give you information without you having to interact with it as much as you would have right. two years ago. It's quite a challenge, frankly. Uh, and I can understand why Apple has been careful about how it modifies the home screen. That's, you know, you don't have a lot of real estate. That's the primary UI, the one pe everybody has to see. And uh, it has to be functional. It has to be quickly grasped when you put the phone out of the pocket. Um, <laughs> Jeff Bezos is playing a Justin Timberlake song. <laughs> I wonder if they put much as much attention to that song selection as Apple does into everything they put into theirs. That's interesting. I don't know. I mean, Justin Timberlake is very, very 2008 at this point, is he not? Bezos said, uh, here's a Justin Timberlake song. I'm being sincere about this. I have an unbelievable admiration for anyone who can make a tiny fedora cool. Really, I'm being sincere. <laughs> it's harder than building a smart... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And now, how many, how many people in that audience are slightly trying to take this thing off their head as we're kicking under the chair? <laughs> uh, now, what's the, the going on with this? Amazon review said it looked cool. What's going on with this? Uh, I believe those are lyrics. lyrics. Ah. Again, not being the Justin Timberlake expert that you are, Chad. I aficionado? Aficionado. Yeah, that's what we call ourselves. Because with your hand in my hand and a pocket full of soul, I can tell you there's no place we could not go. Justin does it better, Lee. Just put your hand on the glass. I'm here trying to pull you through. You just got to be strong. Do, 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 do. It rhymes. Now, is it waterproof or shower singing, or is that is he just teasing us? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and it also lets you order a fedora on Amazon. No, it yeah. does, <laughs> does not do that. Okay, first of all, that's not a fedora. That's a trilby. I've been wearing Let's a fedora right. since I was 18 or 19. Let's get that straight. Do not lump me in with the trilby wearers. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now we're going to see a game uh, called Tofu Fury <laughs> um, that demonstrates the dynamic perspective now, again, I want to emphasize this. It's been called 3D, and I think it is clearly not 3D. It's right. dynamic perspective is a very good way to describe it, yep. although no yep. one really knows what that means. So this is Tofu Fury on the screen right now. <laughs> I would love to see an unlocked version of this, an unlocked GSM version of this. But yep. uh, Amazon's never done well outside the United States. doesn't really seem to care about That's markets right. outside the United States. So uh, I think it's not surprising. It would be nice if you could drop it on any carrier in the United States. It would be. It would Maybe be. it's just a question of support where they feel as though they can handle every AT&T user, but they can't handle every AT&T and Verizon user. They probably also want to follow the Apple model, which started out just on AT&T. And, yeah. you know, they could be that they're not ready to, to right. ship enough units, really, to, to satisfy all carriers. Right. Yeah. So one way to do that is to give exclusivity to one carrier. 
and in response and in uh, in return, AT and T is probably going to promote the heck out of it because they have exclusivity. So apparently, Tofu Fury involves an angry piece of tofu. It's a platformer, <laughs> and in some way, you are able to use the per dynamic perspective to. Uh, and you, I think in a game that could be really yeah. cool. And you're, I, you're presumably a militant uh, vegetarian, right? And <laughs> uh, or the tofu is, is I don't know I don't know you know I don't know the game and uh, as as he tilts the phone he can look everywhere on the level you maneuver a block of tofu to get chi <laughs> oh boy without touching the spikes and you have to get to the fortune kitty and of course having different perspective allows you to launch the tofu uh, more accurately. Hmm. Dynamic angry birds would be great. You know, angry birds behind. is very flat. The ability to to rotate the screen and see sure. kind of around might be might be great. Yeah. Knowing if it where the user, second nature. The key to that's, this that's is, the whole point of this. Yeah. Knowing where the user's head is at all times is the key to this technology, according yeah. to this slide. Just just like it doesn't take long after using an Android phone where hitting the back button it becomes second nature. That's it's right. the answer mm -hmm. to two that's out of right. every five questions that you that's happen right. to have. That's right. If rotating the phone or changing the perspective becomes just as second nature for this, then this will be a really big phone. They're demonstrating how they prototyped this by gluing a sensor onto a uh, designer's glasses. It's not quite Still more Google dignified glass. than Google Glass. <laughs> He's, I guess the idea is that what he has now is far more... Yeah. Better than elegant glass. than yeah. weird glasses with it. Like he says, we had early prototypes rack. working within the first week of the project, um, but wearing the headgear obviously was a non-starter. So the practical right way to do this is with computer vision, which has taken great strides. The ability to mm -hmm. recognize. You mentioned face recognition. Of course, that's possible in Google goggles, but Google intentionally disabled it to avoid right. the political difficulties that yeah. would right. involve. I can't imagine Amazon would allow that. Although I think face recognition is a is a huge yep. valuable thing. It's Nobody too, wants it's to be It's too first. bad the bad guys. Uh, yeah. Look at the reputation that Google Glass is getting. Right. You don't want to be the Google Glass yeah. of face recognition. Unearned. Yeah. So um, challenge, of course, is that some people have hair, some people don't. Some people have beards. There's poor lighting. Um, but that that picture looks so much like an iPhone. It's scary. Yep. He's talking about how how they do the head tracking right. in the real world and all the all the problems with head tracking technology. He says there's already a front facing camera but because the field of view is so narrow it doesn't work you can't you only get 72 degrees you can't see enough of the person and where they are so you need more cameras. Rumored were four additional cameras front facing that were infrared or something like that. There's They're a special camera in the upper left hand corner that has a 120 degree field of view. This is kind of what HTC did with the HTC One. They added these sensors have become so cheap. You can add sure. kind of purpose-built sensors yep. to do one thing, and in this case, uh, to give you a wide-angle view of the user. Yeah. So it, it it sounds like there is only one special camera for that purpose, or maybe there's two. Now that now they're interesting tear down. That's for sure. Yeah, they're they're showing a, an image with the camera on the left, the right. And uh, so there, there's two, and they're using, the, that makes sense, to triangulate. They're using two to triangulate the user. And he's showing the very complicated formulas. But if you hold it in horizontal uh, hor hor horizontal mode, uh, the, and, and you put your thumb over one of them, presumably just... Now this is interesting. Two extra ones would they be. also have to determine the Z um, axis, that is how far away your eyes are from the screen, and they do that as well. But the and and they're pointing this out. Users hold their phones in a variety of ways, so you can't have just two cameras. Now you have to have at least four cameras, one in each corner. And, and there are four. They're all special wide-angle. Four cameras. corner cameras. No matter how you hold your phone, you can pick two. The camera, the phone can pick two. So four cameras that are for per, entirely to determine where your head is. Mm -hmm. And how far away you are makes you makes you think about what a developer could do if they decided to use all four. Imagine a three D object scanner. That looks like that could be a really easy thing to make with this phone. Yep. If you're uh, tuning in for Windows Weekly, uh, we have delayed the show a little bit to cover uh, to give you live coverage of Amazon's Fire Phone announcement. Uh, I I suspect this is the last feature of the phone, so we'll be wrapping up soon and get right to Windows Weekly. Yep. They've added infrared light, one for each camera. 
so they can work in the dark or low light. Wow. Yeah. I'll be shocked if there isn't a 3D scanner app for this sometime yeah. in the first week. Right, because it That's helps. such if, a natural for this. If you're taking a, a, a picture of a product uh, that you want to buy on Amazon, it helps the recognition to know the shape of the box or the shape of the product, whether it's flat, whether it's you know, a box of oatmeal that's you know, round or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I'd be surprised, too, if they didn't come out with this. If not now, then, then at some point in the future. Very interesting. Yeah, then, then, then Amazon could sell you an actual 3D print of the thing you just captured. That'd be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. First, they sell you the printer. Once you get the <laughs> printer, they sell you the material, and then they, you can download something and print it. Apparently, be beards are a, a particular problem. Everybody's going to grow Hats. a beard now. Light eyebrows or no eyebrows. Okay, so they hate you for wearing a trilby. They hate you for wearing a, a beard. This is the anti-hipster phone. He's emphasizing here how difficult this is as a machine learning problem. That's interesting. That's that's Bezos. That's yeah. Bezos as the enthusiast, which I like. Yeah, uh, he's he's excited about the technology that uh, had to go into this. He says you need lots of data in this case, images to train your algorithms. So where do they get all these pictures? We call the NSA. Wonder if that was. I wonder if they're collecting information from uh, from Mayday. Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be interesting? Makes, it makes you want to look at that user agreement once again. Yeah. Wow. I'd be shocked if they did. You really don't. <laughs> Let's just say put on your pants next time before you, yeah. you call. Now, is that a severed human head? No, it's a mannequin, <laughs> a severed mannequin okay. head. That's, I don't believe that. <laughs> it represents his competitors. Actually, after uh, the Game of Thrones season uh, four, they had quite a few they could choose from, and they merely uh, borrowed those from the production company. Spoilers for Original Sin issue three. <laughs> no eye patch, though. Millions of images from thousands of faces all around the world. Where, you might ask, did we get those? Silence. You might. You might. We bought them from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> we just wrote the check and they said, uh, sure, you only need those. We've got some people showering. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit of a sensitive subject, Jeff. You might want to. Uh, this, is, this is the time to release the tension. This Any good comedian, you build the tension, then you release the tension. A tell a joke here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're now showing, instead of doing that, scary faces with red dots on the eyes. So, Anytime you've ever mailed a letter, we were actually taking a picture of you thanks to an embedded camera into the new Amazon mailbox. <laughs> that was actually quite terrifying, that picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> live. Is it zombie apocalypse anywhere, anybody? Represent the perfect Amazon Prime customers. <laughs> I'm glad their mouths aren't sewn shut. Consume. Conform. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Oh, and how do they tell the difference between you and a, a cherub on a mug? Good question. It's not you might, easy. You might wonder how they know. Uh, they, in fact, don't, apparently, according to this image. There's the person, and there's the cherub. There's the cherub. On, well, watch. Go to the next image. <laughs> it finds any face it can. That's similar to the feature on Google Plus Hangouts where it, you can, if there's a there's the stuffed dog behind you and you put on the reindeer, as soon as you put your head out of the frame, the, the, dog, the dog becomes the reindeer. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What about times when cameras find faces they don't belong? A t-shirt with Chewbacca on and a mug with a cherub. Ah, because they know the Z-depth, how far away the head is, they can tell the cherub head is way too small given its distance. Hmm. That's brilliant. Wow. Yes. What about people with Either, tiny heads? Yeah, well, yeah right? Okay. So this, could blow, this, could blow, this could blow apart the Shroud of Turin in about 10 seconds. <laughs> this we wouldn't have need to spend six impressive. centuries of debating it. This is impressive. So are they going to be able to size your fedora based on how? <laughs> you could buy, I guarantee you somebody will ride, write a hat uh, app. Yeah, just, yes. just hold Hold your hold your foot in front of your phone. We will we will get you the right shoe size. And you're gonna we'll be able tell to tell you what, what boots will work for it. And you're gonna be able to try this stuff on virtually. Why not? Why not? 
Uh, yeah, and of course, as somebody in the chat room is pointing out, oh, now that Amazon's broken the ice, Google and Facebook and just say, yeah, we got that too. Because we've had it all along, but we didn't dare show you. This is, uh, this is, you know, I, Andy, you still unimpressed? You still not, you still don't feel oh, it? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, well, that was like a halfway through the presentation. Uh, it looks really, it looks really good. It looks like there's a lot of potential here. It's going to be, you really do have to have this damn thing in your hands, I think, to yeah. really get that impression. Yeah. So. So send this one, I think, I think. I, I think exactly. I think they, they've got uh, between now, if, if they are not shipping it until September or whatever, they are going to have, I think they should spend a couple months having a roadshow of some, of some sort where yeah. they're either letting the press take a look at this or just, you know, mall kiosks or whatever. Yeah. Again, Andy, Andy made the, the ex way, hard to do. And Andy made the excellent point that while this does look like a very, uh, a finished product um, and they are pushing the SDKs available now, uh, Firefly and Dynamic Perspective, uh, they've got to get FCC approval. And if they had been doing that, we would have known more about the phone by now. So it yep. seems likely that there will be some time between and this. And Jeff Bezos is saying that it's the developers who are going to make this something really killer, and that's probably true. This is a long. This, Amazon yeah. is a long-term thinking yeah. company, yeah. and this is yeah. a play for the long term. Showing, it's always uh, been one of their strengths, but remember that remember at WWDC, as with almost every developer show, Apple points out that the reason why you want to be developing for iPhone is because that's where the money is. That's where you're going to get the return on your investment as a developer. So it might be a little bit more difficult for them to say, we've got this brand new phone that's only available in the U.S. Uh, and it's just getting its toehold. But yes, by all means, invest many, many weeks in trying to figure out how to make a killer app for it. He's now uh, showing videos of developers, including uh, the uh, CEO of, of, of Zillow and the guy who developed Threes. I think Threes with dynamic perspective would be quite fun. Yeah, yeah. Gestures, too, would be cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. You know, this idea that uh, everyone else will copy these features Dragon is veil. one reason why, as a developer, you might want to jump on this, because you can start building uh, games and software that support these hardware features with the belief that Apple and Google will come out with similar ones, and you can sort of port your concepts over. In the video, the developers are saying the API was easy to plug into our device. We already had it running on a ton of Android devices. This just gave us an easy output. The first, word, first time Android's been mentioned, by the way, in all of this. If you have an Android app up and running, it doesn't take much at all. The overall theme, it's easy for devs to add this to their existing Android app without much effort. Of course, since this is the only phone that does this, you'd have to say, well... I got to do it. I got to do a special version for the fire. Right now, they're showing a video of developers talking about how easy it is to use the dynamic right. perspective SDK. And of course, the whole purpose of that is to, this is kind of like a developer's conference, but the developers aren't in the audience. They're watching, presumably, and uh, they're going to get this information through the press, but they're really pitching this as a developer. Developer.amazon. I love developer hardware. Developer.amazon.com slash Firephone for all the uh, SDKs. Uh, and that is live now. And it would definitely behoove them to make sure that developers have these devices early so that by the time this actually lands in people's hands, they have stuff to actually try this out with. Yeah. I'm sure that all the core Fire apps are going to support the 3D and Dynamics perspective. But Bezos now talking about, quote, small touches, unquote. So it sounds like he's wrapping it up. I doubt there are any additional major features that they're going to announce after the well still haven't announced price availability uh, and carrier those are fairly important issues although i think we probably know what he's talking about yeah. jeff's been on stage now for about an hour and 10 minutes um and all jeff by the way all yeah. jeff no no nobody else um well, amazing craig federica didn't show up <laughs> Probably still keyed up from two weeks ago. <laughs> Usability is the big issue, isn't it? I think, uh, with in terms of specs, this is a, a just like any other high-end phone: two gigabytes of RAM, quad-core mm -hmm. processor, GPU. It's got a 13-megapixel camera with an f 2.0 aperture and OIS, 4.7-inch IPS LCD. But what's interesting is the UI, uh, the choices they've made in the UI, and the additional cameras, the four corner cameras on the front that determine where you are as the user, not only uh, what what angle you're looking at the, the phone, but how far away from the phone you are and adjusting the display for that. Also using the accelerometer in a way that we've seen before, but with Samsung and other phones, but perhaps uh, could be 
um, better implemented uh, in terms of rotating the phone to, to scroll through a carousel. It will have Amazon's custom Android OS, very much like it looks like the Fire HDX, but modified to fit a phone. Um, now he's showing a calendar that will send automatically send a, a message telling that you're running late if it knows that you're running late. Oh. Yeah. It's interesting if, if developers decide that between this and Project Tango from Google, if it isn't really time to start thinking about writing 3D aware apps or 3D real world aware apps. Either one is kind of interesting, but both together, that's enough to tip, I think, some people into the column. Well, I've got this idea for, again, building a really cool, really interesting $2.99 3D object scanner. Let's say now let's, now let's actually do it. Amazon uh, developer site is down for scheduled maintenance. They did say this would be up and running. Uh, Developer.amazon.com slash Firephone. Obviously, will be soon. I'm not bothered by uh, by uh, Amazon skinning uh, am, uh, skinning Google. Like, excuse me, skinning Android like this. I think that anything that moves the user interface forward, that gives us alternatives, is a good thing. And they've done some really good things with it. Of course, uh, they the showed some there. maps, and we speculated that the maps would be no, uh, Nokia's here uh, maps. Nokia retained the rights to those here maps, but did license them uh, for some years to Microsoft, which of course bought Nokia as a mobility division. Um, we don't know if Microsoft has an exclusive, but I bet they don't, which means that uh, they could put the here maps. And that is, by the way, uh, I think many agree, the best mapping system, even perhaps better than Google's own mapping system. Uh, now, off-contract prices, um, according to the chat room, and I guess these prices are showing up on the Amazon site, 32 gigabytes AT&T, uh, available July 25th. Six hundred fifty hmm. to seven hundred fifty dollars with contract for pre-order. That these seem like dummy um, prices. Yep. I wouldn't. I, I let's wait and see what Jeff says. Uh, but it yep. does say available for pre-order. Available uh, for shipping July twenty-fifth. But uh, yeah, that, that is on the Amazon site with contract six hundred fifty to seven hundred fifty dollars. That I think is a dummy. There's no I way that's right. the actual right. pricing. Uh, 750 without contract, 750 with contract. That's confusing. It also says the it'll be released July 25th, yeah. which um, also has to be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah. At this Let's point. wait and see. He's going to announce this. Uh, AT&T's uh, mobility CEO, Ralph De La Vega, is on stage now with Jeff. He says they've been great partners with the Kindle. Why not with the phone, too? AT&T, for the last several years, has provided the whisper sync on the Kindle. Fire Phone is an AT&T exclusive uh, Ralph De La Vega, one of the more dynamic speakers. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm. Don't want anybody to take it for anything you know, less. Vega means star, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to tell you how wonderful this is. This is the man who said, by the way, the greatest mistake he ever made was offering unlimited data on the iPhone. Um, it, the greatest mistake for him. The only reason I'm on AT&T for me. De La Vega says, this is some great breakthrough innovation. Don't you think so? And it is compulsive once you learn how to do it. Two quotes that will go down in history. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. It is compulsive once you know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he's talking about the phone. Once you get used to it, you're used to it. <laughs> should, we should point out, out English is not his first butter. language. He's talking about four key features, the camera on the upper left, the camera on the upper right, the camera on the now lower left. Now, wait a minute. What is this? Jeff's come out with a wrapped package. There's a red bow on it. Hmm. Is it ticking? What could it be? Each and every one of you at this announcement will get this very nice empty box with a red bow to symbolize, I don't know. Overnight uh, shipping. Over, I don't know. This is uh, no doubt the phone. It looks like the phone. Of July. Yeah. It's Jeff's Friday. got it. It's a Friday. Well, that would that would indicate suddenly a reason why I should have gone to this event. The four Just breakthrough kidding. features, according to Ralph De La Vega, dynamic perspective. Uh, he says it's wow right now, and it's going to get a whole lot better. Firefly. He says I fireflied everything. <laughs> it is compulsive once you get used to doing it. Just don't firefly a fox. Yeah, don't leave your firefly open. <laughs> so, but he's doing our job for us with the wrap up. So. Uh, dynamic perspective, not 3D, but the ability to uh, 
change the image depending on where your head is. The uh, dedicated Firefly button, which allows you to press a button on the phone, mm -hmm. capture an image, and act upon it, whether it's a phone number or a product you can buy on Amazon. He says, De La Vega says, it's addictive and an absolute breakthrough. I'm going to buy a whole lot more things now. <laughs> uh, that is what we're all looking to do. Totally incidentally, that had nothing to do with any of the things that they announced. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm going to be buying new AT&T turn-by-turn service for 20 bucks a month. I'm going to be buying the new phone integration app from AT&T for $8 a month. I would have thought that uh, Amazon might have learned from Apple who invited De La Vega on the stage some years ago yeah. with the iPhone <laughs> announcement and killed the audience. Yeah. That maybe this wasn't the best thing, but perhaps that's the deal. Jeff doesn't look... He looks bemused, not exactly entertained. <laughs> Or glazed might be another. I would say about one. ready to shoot lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> the famous Jeff Bezos laugh will uh, soon emerge from the Fremont Theater. The right angle, he does look like Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's on the blue card fact sheet that I have in front of me. <laughs> Jeff played left field for the Toledo Mud Hens in the 1930s. Uh, boy, that's a good shot of De La Vega, too. We got a, we got a congratulating gadget for really capturing the drama of yeah. the moment. Yes. Two executives on a stage. It's <laughs> riveting, but they're capturing it in real time. De La Vega is talking about how fast okay. the Wi-Fi can I think there's a Photoshop else. meme here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, mm. uh. See, an Apple can learn a lesson. It didn't kill these people to wear a jacket, a nice little sport coat. Wow, De La Vega has, that they dressed up a De La Vega has found an interesting third feature. We're, by the way, very slowly going through the four things he likes about this phone. Yeah. <laughs> We're now up to number three. The combination of Fire TV and the Fire Phone together. De La Vega says, I have 45 megabit service in my house. It's great. He loves the fact you can use the second screen experience. AT&T uh, mm. says this is the remote control for your life. Huh. Can we fast forward? Because that's what I'd like to do to right now. To me, it now. looks like Bezos oh is, my is God. about ready to go out there and tackle him. <laughs> Bezos is saying, He's Steve ready. warned me. Like, can you please yeah. get off the Steve stage? Steve warned me. Was it De La Vega who had the the blue cards uh, and then iPhone announcement and just was... Finally, the fourth, finally, May Day. We've worked closely with Amazon, so if you have any issue with AT&T service, there is a handoff between May, May Day and AT&T tech support. That's good. Right. Yeah, that's so good. that face recognition can, do, can detect anger and scowls. Yeah. And you're right over AT&T. You can pre-order today, says Brad Mullen on ours. On, uh, in Gadget. You can pre-order today. I always love it when they offer that as a feature. We sure, we'll take your money. We'll, we'll take your money. We're doing it for you. Well, Amazon's good about that. If you pre-order something, they don't bill you until it's uh, yeah. shipping. But unless, um, it's, unless, unless it's from a publisher that they're currently negotiating with. We'll do another search on Fire Phone. And, uh, yeah, that price has still got to be wrong. $650 without contract, $650 with contract. Uh, they have not put the contract price yet. I think those are off-contract prices. 32 gig off-contract, 650. 64 gig off-contract, 740, 750. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, but they have not yet put up the uh, on-contract price. Now, the question is whether the off-contract is unlocked. Uh, apparently, Ralph has now started talking about the AT&T plans. Uh. <laughs> This looks pretty uh, official. This is uh, the back in an hour when that's, done the, that's the page, huh? Yeah, this is from the chat room. This is from uh, yeah. No, I see the Dim page. Uh, I just feel like the pricing has price varies with service agreement. All right, here we go. Family plan. So enter your zip code. Let me try this. Plan. Let me let me try this. No 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 nine four nine five two. Um, the zip code is invalid. Well, that's right. Nine four nine five two. Now I'm not trying. Select a plan in your zip code. Individual plan without a service plan. Six fifty for thirty-two gigs. Bezos gave De La Vega a fire phone and a little box with a ribbon on it. Patted him on the head and off he went. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank Same two-year contract option is one ninety-nine according to The Verge. Yeah, well, now they've they've updated that screen, so it is no. It now says one ninety-nine to six forty-nine. 
So they have updated the screen. So that, as I expected, that was a dummy uh, entry that wasn't up to date until you actually searched for it. Uh, in fact, the 64 gig it does not have a page yet; only the 32 gig. So they're they're changing the website as we speak. The first smartphone by Amazon, the only smartphone with dynamic perspective, Firefly technology. They're pushing those two particularly. It does have the May Day button. Ah, it includes a full year of Prime. If you're not a Prime member, mm -hmm. you'll get a full year of Prime. If you already have Prime, we'll extend your membership for a full year. That's a $100 discount, in effect. And as you said, once you have Prime, you stick you, with it. You stick with it. It doesn't run with back, unfortunately. You can't say you never go back. So I'm going to order it without a service plan. $27 a month with the AT&T Next program. Yeah, that's their uh, that's their program. All the phone companies do this now yeah. for early for rapid upgraders. Um, all right, I've placed an order for it, and uh, the uh, it says one item will be shipped to Leo Laporte. Estimated delivery July twenty fifth. So that is the okay. date. There's the price one hundred ninety nine dollars, or twenty seven bucks per month if you get the next plan. Uh, and they don't do a th yeah. Then he's saying July twenty fifth. So that is the date. That's uh, that's one month and one week. Yep. Five weeks from right now. Um, twenty seven dollars a month if you have AT and T Next, which we have looked at and is not a good deal. Um, Once you go Prime, you stay for all time. And it includes a, a year of Prime, so that's a hundred dollar value. Existing Prime members get another year. That's nice. Good stuff. So there you have it. A brand new. Phone, the first phone from Amazon, the Fire phone, and priced very much like a high-end phone in any other, um, uh, from any other manufacturer. But given that you get a free year of Prime, that I guess means it's 100 bucks less, so yep. $100 phone. Uh, 32 gigabytes for $200 with a service agreement, $650 not unlocked, but just without a service plan. Right. Um, there is a distinction. They also, for 100 bucks more, will offer a 64-gig version, which is not yet on the Amazon site. Um, they're finally showing the same video, by the way, that we saw before with people looking at their crotch, only now they're showing it as an actual phone in their hands. So uh, we're seeing that. There's, there's a good example. Yeah. And because it's... Now, this is a perfect example. It isn't really 3D. That's how you can see it on a 2D screen. Yeah. Uh, and still get the effect. It's a perspective, a dynamic, they call it yeah. dynamic perspective. Right. It remains to be that seen whether it's more than just having a two planes. It looks like it is. It but looks pretty cool in the video. Of course, yeah. it would. But uh, yeah. if it looks in real life as it does in this video, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, if they can get, if they can get developers on board, because yeah. they're not going to do it with just the built-in apps. I think we all agree on that. Uh, Amazon also put a pretty good camera on here, 13 megapixels, F2. OIS and offers free unlimited storage for your photos uh, with the phone. That's pretty compelling as well. Also, they got the photo roll just uh, one swipe away from the home screen. Uh, interesting. So easy to show off and, and share photos. I, I, I like it. I like it. I mean, they, they, uh, my first question every, every time I'm looking at a new device is what reason did this, for what reason did this thing have to exist? Like, why did you have to enter this market? And they did do some brand new things with this. It looks pretty cool. Uh, Firefly looks great. The 3D stuff and the gesture stuff will will be great if it's if it's taken up by developers. If it's not, then okay, who cares? But at least it's not more expensive than a comparable phone with comparable features. Well, I mean, you know, I think again that they're 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 doing this for the future. I think that Amazon yeah. wants a future in which you can go to Amazon.com and you can look at products in 3D. They already have, you know, different perspectives that choose a picture or sometimes zoom in or spin it around or whatever even the even the ad for this phone has a sort of 3d perspective feature and they probably want that for all uh for all products they want to be able to scan and showroom like crazy they want you know they, they basically want you to have a a direct entree into amazon and what it sells but they're also willing to give you other things like recognizing art and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, I really think this is a long-term play where they see a world where you can see things in 3D and it can basically see your face and do recognition, recognize, recognize objects. 
And that's 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 reasonable. It also moves us into a world where uh, ecosystem lock-in is even more important. If you're a Google, Google user, no Google services are available in the Amazon store. You'll be using Amazon services, the right. Here Maps, like it looks like, and other services, not Google Voice, not Google, I guess, Calendar. You probably can lock in, log into Calendar. But uh, mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is really an Amazon ecosystem play, just as the iPhone is an Apple ecosystem play. And uh, Google's the only one who is as yet not, Kind of locked down their ecosystem yeah um but i imagine there's pressure on them to do that well we thank you for joining us thank you andy Anako, for being here thought final thoughts uh again looks good uh i'm i'm not, I'm, I'm not dazzled and wowed but i made that might change my mind uh, by september when we have three months worth of developers uh, attacking this thing right of course can't, we'll, can't wait to see it let's all see it let's all use right. it let's all see right. it and use it well and we're going to be in that position both with uh, the iphone the next iphone which will come out roughly in September, the the um, this will come out earlier, which is in interesting timing, yep. July twenty fifth. Yep. Final thoughts, Mike Elgin. Well, if the three D or the the perspective feature is a hit, then it will be emulated and we'll have multiple incompatible standards, and that's bad. If it's not a hit, then it'll be another fad and it'll fade away, and nobody will use it, and that's not very good. So you know, it's the the the, the path toward this being an awesome thing for users in general is a narrow one. And so it's pretty unlikely that we'll have a, you know, the, the ideal thing would be that it's awesome, that it's great, and that there is u there are universal standards across the board on multiple uh, platforms. That's almost not going to happen. Right. Uh, almost certainly not going to happen. So it's exciting technology. It's nice to see somebody doing uh, something very bold, striking out in a, in a completely new direction, and they're leveraging the stuff that they have behind the scenes. So I think it's, it's going to be great for a lot of users, and they're going to market the heck out of it on Amazon.com, right there front and center on the homepage for the next year, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think it doesn't really matter if anybody adopts dynamic perspective because if you enter the Amazon Ecoverse, that's what you're in. That's right. And uh, that will be a feature of it. Um, and if not, then not. I think the Mayday feature may make it something that uh, appeals particularly to first-time smartphone buyers. I certainly would recommend it for somebody who's uncomfortable with the idea of moving from a feature phone to a smartphone. And it's remote control for your life, as we heard, and, and uh, presumably okay. that means that you'll be able to control the Amazon drone as it approaches your front door. <laughs> I'm looking at um, some more specs from the Amazon page. The phone does shoot a 1080p video at 30 frames per second from both front and rear facing, uh, which is unusual. Uh -huh. uh, it offers panorama, lenticular, and burst capture. Lenticular capture. Uh, so a three, it combined multiple images in lenticular mode, so it'll give you a 3D image uh, capability. The Amazon App Store is not the Google Play Store, but does have 200,000 apps now. And the phone comes with 1,000 Amazon coins. So it sounds like the Amazon App Store is going to move to a coin system instead of a dollar system. Immersive games and apps, the carousel, 2.2 uh, gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800, not an 801, but an 800. That's... The previous generation Snapdragon Adreno 330 GPU, 4.7 inch display, very bright, 590 nits. They downplay the resolution. In fact, they don't even tell you what the resolution is, but I'm guessing that's because it's 720p. That would save you battery life, and they're claiming the Fire Phone will deliver 285 hours of standby, 22 hours of talk time, 65 hours of audio playback, up to 11 hours of video playback. That is a lot of battery life. Yep. Um, and you, you'd probably have to do 720p uh, to do that. It comes with a tangle-free premium earbuds, um, Dolby Digital Plus sound with dual stereo speakers, and, uh, you know, I think a, a front door into the Amazon ecosystem. They're calling it Fire OS 3.5, and I expect that Amazon now will work very actively on its version of Android Mm -hmm. uh, in in order to keep it up with uh, what Google's doing with Android. That's right. And this I think is more that, than a skin at this point. Yeah, and, and I think that <coughs> probably uh, my first guess is that one of the most controversial features will be the enhanced carousel, which is a user interface. <coughs> you can pin things. You can you can find recent photos. You can access most recent recently visited websites. You can return missed calls. This is kind of similar to. Uh, the trend where you can interact from the notification view of right. your phone. 
Uh, but uh, Amazon seems super excited about this. My guess is that users will not be. It will be, of course, uh, U.S. only, as, as most Amazon products are, and that's a lot of that has to do with publishing rights. Here are the sp specific tech details. It is, in fact, a 720p uh, screen, 1280 by 720, 315 pixels per inch, 590 nits, 1001 contrast ratio. Um, it has uh, AC, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi with uh, channel bonding, Bluetooth 3.0, not 4.0, NFC is in uh, the machine, um, so it does not have Bluetooth LE, which is, I think, increasingly going to be uh, important in phones. Battery is 2,400 milliamp hours, uh, so that's a fairly big battery for a screen like that. Yep. I'm not surprised they're getting good battery life uh, on it or claiming good battery life on it. Some of the things that they have are similar to the Fire TV or the, uh, the their tablets, including uh, Mayday. Uh, for tech support, ASAP for advanced streaming and prediction, the X-ray feature where you can get more information and context about what you're watching, the second screen feature mentioned by the AT&T guy who let, that lets you fling TV shows and movies from the phone to the TV. It's, right. you know, AirPlay essentially. Uh, and, of course, uh, free unlimited cloud storage of photos taken with fire. Unlimited cloud storage of photos. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, well, people are going to take some huge photos. Not only that, but I've got uh, the press release in front of me right now, and uh, one of the bullet items is reliable backup and restore, leveraging the experience and operational excellence of Amazon Web Services. P uh, Fire customers can automatically backup device settings, notes, bookmarks, messages, and installed applications. No need to manually configure or connect to a computer. So I don't know if that's going to cost anybody anything, but uh, ha ha having run into the cap of uh, iCloud backups on my iPhone, if it really is whatever you've got on your, on your phone, we will back it up. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting how much they're pushing the photography. I mean, not only a great camera, but a lot of capabilities in that camera. It's got it's got four cameras in the front, uh, as well as the uh, camera to take your picture on the front and the camera. You on mentioned the back. mentioned two point one megapixel front facing camera. Uh, yeah, there you go. And and yeah. You, yeah, it has to be said that these front facing cameras the, around the edges are being used for particular purposes today, but could be used for all kinds of yeah, things in maybe, the future. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, and AT&T only, and uh, it's not clear how easy it will be to unlock. Um, I think the thing that uh, appeals a lot to uh, photographers, uh, photo buffs, is a dedicated hardware camera button, which this has. Yes. That's great. Press and, it once uh, to turn on the camera, press it again to take the yep, picture. Yep, That's great. Much like Nokia. Mm -hmm. And the dedicated Firefly button, which uh, is very interesting. Yes. Well, i sorry to have uh, delayed Windows Weekly, but we thought this was an important event, and I'm glad you could uh, join us for our coverage. Um, thank you, Mike Elgin, news director, TNT host, and uh, thank you uh, from uh, all of us to Andy Anako, the host of uh, Mac Break Weekly, uh, for being here. Thanks to all of you for joining us. This concludes our live coverage of Amazon's launch event, the Amazon Fire Phone.